Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy here. Today we are back with round four of the recent league challenge I got to go attend at Cape Fear Games in Wilmington, North Carolina. So if you guys did miss it, we actually did upload rounds one through three already. I'll have links down below in the description if you guys wanna go check those out. And of course, I'll have any of the future rounds posted down there in the description as well whenever they do get uploaded. Uh, but here in this match, we have Marilyn Smitley on the left. She's gonna be playing Torkoal V and then you actually have yours truly. I'm going to be over there on the right playing Zacian B, Lucario, and Melmetal GX. So I found out I was playing against the Torkoal deck this round. I remember thinking, well, that's uh, that seems pretty sketchy, <laughs> uh, being weak to fire. Uh, but luckily for me, in my list, I do have actually a somewhat heavy uh, Metal Frying Pan count. So that's going to be one of the big things that could potentially save me. I feel like if I can find the Frying Pans where I need them, I'm going to be in a good spot. If not... Uh, I might potentially get rolled over um, by this this Torkoal deck. So we'll have to see how this is going to unfold. It looks like I am getting to get to go first. I'm starting with Zacian B. It looks like Marilyn over there starting with the Oranguru from Sword and Shield. So I'm just going to get down an attachment. And here I'm just going to end my turn with Intrepid Sword. Not really too much else uh, to do. Uh, looks like Marilyn found herself a Torkoal B. And she is going in with a Crushing Hammer right away. And it is going to flip ahead, so Crushing Hammer, of course, it's going to pair nicely with Torkoal V. Torkoal V's second attack discards two energy whenever it attacks. And then Crushing Hammer, of course, from there, is going to be able to remove even more energy. So here I'm just taking a look at the Torkoal V, just trying to do a little refresher on what it does. The first attack uh, does 90, I believe, plus 90 more if you discard the top card of your deck and it's an energy. And the second attack, it doesn't hit quite as hard, but it does discard two energy in the process. Uh, but of course, the big thing for her deck, it is going to hit me for weakness. But here, it looks like she is going for uh, two Pidgeys with that Pokemon fan club. So this is telling me she's playing uh, like some sort of Pidgeotto line in her deck just to boost her consistency here. Uh, so we'll have to see if she plays anything else, if she plays like my Cargo or my Cargo GX. Uh, but right now, it's looking like she's opting for like a Pidgeotto line instead. So here, she's just going to get an attachment down and pass over to me. So here I am going to be able to get down another you know, Zacian, burn that Metal Saucer uh, to get that energy she removed back in play. And just trying to think what I want to do from here. It looks like I have a Professor's Research in my hand. And I'm just going to use Intrepid Sword on the benched Zacian. I did not get a good look at my hand from there, but that was actually a really good Intrepid Sword. Of course, you get to look at the top three cards of your deck, attach any Metal Energy you find there, and keep the other cards uh, and end your turn in the process. And hitting two energy like that, usually a little bit unlikely. Uh, so that's definitely a good one. I definitely want to keep powering up the bench Zacian just because if she goes like welder, switch, knockout, I don't want to lose all of my energy here. So it looks like she is going to use that ability on a Ranguru that allows her to switch the top card of her deck with a card in her hand. And here she's just going to pass back over to me. So here I'm going to go for a Pokemon Catcher. And I can't tell. If, okay, it must have flipped a Tails. And that's going to be two Tails in a row. That's pretty bad. So of course... I really wanted to bring up this Torkoal V this turn, take a knockout, remove that threat from play. Um, so I'll have to see what I'm going to do from here. I, I can't really tell what I have in hand. I know I have a few supporters. But just trying to, I guess, see. I must have something kind of crucial in my hand if I'm not going to use Professor's Research. So here I'm a bit conflicted about where I want this energy. I could potentially get the energy down on this Powered Up Zacian in preparation of a Crushing Hammer or something like that. Or I can opt to spread my energy around a little bit like this. But we'll have to see what's going to happen. So here I am just going to discard my hand, get a fresh hand of seven. And I do find a metal frying pan. That's definitely nice. So the reason I did not play the switch is because if she brings up this Torkoal V and I don't have a metal frying pan, I wouldn't have been able to sustain a hit from this Torkoal V. But now this is a situation where I might not have minded so much if, um, had I switched and taken the knockout here. And, okay, I found two Metal Frying Pans. That's actually really big. I'm just going to end my turn with another Intrepid Sword. So just kind of taking my time getting set up behind these, uh, Zacians. Uh, finding the Metal Frying Pans were some of the big things here. And, alright, so let's see what route Marilyn is going to go. So she is going to use that ability on Pidgeotto. Air Mail is going to allow her to look at the top two cards of her deck. She picks one, puts the other on the bottom of her deck. So we have yet to see a Welder from her. Now she does have a Switch in hand, so she could 
Uh, potentially switch and try to use collect on Pidgey if she so chose to. But here she's going to get down an attachment and she's going to switch actually into Torkoal. I'm actually really happy about this because she won't be able to take a one hit knockout, whereas I will be able to eliminate the big threat, uh, you know, from her side of the field from play. So here it looks like I'm going to play a Cynthia and Caitlyn, it appears. And okay, I guess I'm just correcting some of the, the damage that was on my, my board. So I'm going to discard, it looks like, a skateboard, get back a Mallow and Lana. Malon, of course, is going to going to be good throughout the course of this game to allow my Pokemon to tank a couple of more hits. You know, with these metal frying pans, these Torkoal Vs won't be able to take one hit knockouts. So I want to be able to successfully heal off these Zacians throughout the game. And here I'm going to take a knockout, getting myself the first two prizes of the game. So I think that was actually a really big turn uh, right there. Eliminating that Torkoal V from play, really, really big. So let's see. And it looks like uh, Marilyn is going to find herself a welder. Finally, I know that's going to be one of the big cards she's really been looking for. And she has the fire crystal to go right along with it. So now, unfortunately for her, she does have this giraffe rig in the active now. Um, so here she is going to get down the two fire energy uh, and draw three cards with welder. And then she can attach another from turn. Oh, she does find the switch. So she could uh, think about switching into... The Torkoal, but I think I actually want to save, uh, see her save her attack for whenever she can power up the second attack and remove my energy from play. Uh, because her first attack is going to two-shot me and allow me to one-shot her back. So I think she needs to save her attacks for when she can remove energy from my Pokemon and make it harder for me to make a counter-attack. So I'm going to get down another Chaotic Swell uh, that's going to ensure that her giant hearths can't ever come down and play. So I'm going to go for a Quick Ball, it looks like. Just got to figure out what I want to discard here. Going to get rid of a Dusk Main Necrozma. Probably not very good in this matchup. And here, just I could go for Jirachi. Uh, I also could go for Fion. I think either of those is going to be acceptable. And here, that is exactly what I'm going to do. So Fion, of course, uh, has that Whirlpool Suction ability. You can discard all cards attached to it, put it at the bottom of your deck, and then your opponent switches their active with one of their bench Pokemon. I'm not worried about this Giraffe Rig, but any of these other Pokemon I would love to knock out. So here, uh, she does promote the Torkoal. And then uh, Meryl was mistaken. Uh, she, she thought for a second that I was choosing to bring up Torkoal. So I was like, no, what, take it back. Pr promote whoever you want. Uh, I don't want you to, uh, you know, um, react to the card incorrectly and assume it did something different. So um, feel free to, to choose a different target. Um, so here, it looks like I am going to... It looks like I'm doing some switching Malolana shenanigans. Okay. Just to attempt to heal a little in this turn as well. So I am going to uh, take out that Oranger. That could definitely be good. Oranger is definitely an important card for her deck to function in certain cases. And we see a Welder in her hand. And also a Judge. Judge is a card I uh, haven't seen too much of. Especially since Marnie just came out. But we'll have to see... Uh, if that does wind up seeing some play in this uh, in this match. So here she's going to get down another Pidgey. Definitely good. She wants to keep increasing her draw options. And she's going to get down another Energy and just go for a Judge. So of course, we have Marnie in the format right now, which sees a lot of play. But Judge, it was, it's been in the format up until now as well. Both players shuffle their hands into their deck, draw four cards. So it's sometimes a decent Disruption card as well. Now, I can't tell how many Energies Marilyn has on this Torkoal. If it's three... I feel really good about this, but if it's four, then we might be in some trouble because she could potentially remove two of my energy, and then uh, she put me at a low hand size as well, which could be really bad. <laughs> so we're gonna see a quick ball getting down another Torkoal V. So her deck is starting to stabilize a little bit, but again, this I think this turn really matters in terms of, oh, and she has a crushing hammer as well. This could be big if she does flip heads, uh, but she does flip tail, so I am ecstatic about that. So here, let's see which attack she's going to go for. I can't tell how much energy she has. Okay, she is going to go for the second attack. That's really good for her. And so I have, it looks like, a fully powered Zacian V on the bench. And I have a Mallow and Lana, so I could opt to go that route and heal off this this Zacian I have. Or I could, I, I know I have a Quick Ball. I could find my Dedene and refill my hand that way as well if I choose to. So it looks like I am going to go for the Malo and Lana. Oh, but here it looks like I'm not going to go for the secondary effect. 
I just want to play the Malolana and guarantee, um, and and guarantee the switching effect this turn, no matter what, because I need to knock out this Torkoal. So here I am going to uh, get down this Oranguru on the bench, opting to discard the Jirachi in this case, just because my deck plays more Jirachis than Oranguru, and I can potentially draw back into another one. And just going to go for this Dedenne, refill my hand to a fresh hand of six. And like I said, I do find another Jirachi, so that's why I opted to keep the Oranguru instead. So from here, I'll have to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that Oranguru, that ability on Oranguru. Um, but here, I think my deck's in a pretty good spot. I don't really see a way for Marilyn to get a one-hit knockout on her next turn here. So I'm going to knock out another Torkoal V, get two prize cards, and now all I need is really just... Uh, a switch in energy and I should be able to win because I have one prize remaining so I think uh Marilyn actually hitting tails on that crushing hammer last turn was really impactful had she done that I might not have been able to actually get an attack off so I think my turn could have gone very differently uh had that been the case so we're gonna see a fire crystal from Marilyn and she will be able to weld her onto this Torkoal V so allowing her to draw three cards uh, she does find buff padding. That's actually really good for her uh, because now this Torkoal V is actually out of range of getting knocked out because buff padding, of course, is going to add 50 HP uh, to your Pokemon if it has a four retreat cost. So this Torkoal V, definitely out of range of me taking a knockout. So now if I want to win, I would need a switch energy in either some combination of Pokemon Catcher or Fion uh, to actually get a knockout here. And we see I do draw a Quick Ball, so I definitely have access to that. So I'm going to get down an energy on this bench Zacian. Oh, and I do have the Metal Saucer. And with the Quick Ball in hand, like I said, I can guarantee the Fion. And that should just be the game here. So I'm going to discard that Galarian Berserker. Go right for that Fion. And now the Whirlpool Suction ability will allow uh, me to take a knock on anything else on Maryland's side of the field. And that is going to be the game. So the Zacian deck, you know, taking a win over, over this Fire deck. It's not usually what you uh, kind of expect to happen a lot of the time. Uh, but definitely i'm excited for it of course so that is going to be round four guys of course like i did mention we do have some other rounds already uploaded links down below in the description and we will have links to the other rounds that will be uploaded down there as well but if you guys did enjoy this content today of course feel free to like and subscribe and consider supporting the channel as well by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rare candy tcg or by picking up some merch from our online store rare candy tcg.com it would mean a lot but as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.